Now, here at Top Oz Tours, we spend most of our time exploring Oz, but every now and then, it's fun to head further afield. And this episode of our YouTube travel series covers a bucket list topper for many Aussies. Europe river cruising is hugely popular, and the two-week trip from Amsterdam in the Netherlands to Budapest in Hungary, travelling along the Rhine, Main and Danube rivers is probably the most popular itinerary. I'm Adam Ford, and in this video, we bring you tips for 10 great things to do on the Danube portion of that trip. From Passau on the German-Austrian border through to fabulous Budapest. Some of these activities will be included in the cost of a Danube cruise. Others you can do under your own steam. We'll soak up the Baroque beauty of Milk Abbey. Taste some top drops in gorgeous Dernstein. Follow in the footsteps of the mighty Habsburgs in Vienna. Seek out the secret to the perfect Wiener Schnitzel at Vienna's oldest eatery. Shop for handcrafted wares in the Slovakian capital, Bratislava. Wash away our holiday cares in Budapest. And much more. And if all that sounds like music to your ears, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. We're travelling on a chartered cruise on board the beautifully appointed Amadeus Brilliant, which underwent a comprehensive refurbishment in 2020. Life on a river cruise is wonderfully relaxed. You unpack once, all meals are included, and the beauty of old world Europe is yours to admire each and every day. I expected to see a lot of cruise ships on the Danube, but much of the time we seem to have the river all to ourselves. You can just sit back, relax, and take it all in from the open top deck. Evenings on board the ship are relaxed and informal, with a well-stocked cocktail bar and live entertainment. Now the great thing about this itinerary is that there's lots of time to do your own thing, which is great because I get to sit and enjoy this, Dankeschön, and watch the world go by. We join the ship in Passau, an ideal town to explore on foot, with a compact centre, winding cobbled streets, exquisite architecture, and a history dating back to Roman times. If you plan to visit famous St Stephen's Cathedral, keep an eye out for an antique bookshop on the opposite side of the square. Here I get an impromptu history lesson on the Passau region. There's a fascinating collection of rare books on display and even if you're not in the market for a medieval manuscript, it's worth calling in for a look. Our next stop is the bustling town of Melk in Lower Austria. The town is another top spot to explore on foot, but it's Melk Abbey that most visitors come to see, parts of which date back to the 11th century. This vast Benedictine monastery overlooks the Danube Valley and is open to visitors. The Baroque era buildings and ornate finishes from the 18th century are truly awe-inspiring. Thank you. 
leave time to explore the monastery's grounds, which are equally impressive. With half a million visitors a year, it's clear the monks have no qualms about welcoming guests into their incredible home. This is absolutely true. That shows you how different the monks here are like in other monasteries. Here they are not hidden behind the monastery's wall. They live with the tourists, they live with the pupils. Here we do have a high school. That means when you want to be a monk here, you shouldn't expect really a silent life. It's full of energy and that shows also the whole complex here. Cruising between Milk and the town of Dernstein in the Wachau Valley wine region is filled with ooh and ah moments. Dernstein itself looks like something straight out of a fairy tale. Its history dates back to the 12th century, when England's Richard the Lionheart was imprisoned here by Leopold V, Duke of Austria. Today, the region is best known for its winemaking industry, and I'm heading to a local wine bar to learn more. This is an absolutely beautiful spot here. Thanks a lot. I really hate it. It's absolutely uh, a special thing uh, to walk out in the morning and have a look at the vineyards, at the old uh, city wall. It is also special for us. Tell me a little bit about the grapes that are grown here. Um, Right here in the Vacha Valley, uh, we are talking about uh, Grüne Wildliner, which is a typical Austrian white wine uh, grape that we are known for, um, as well as beautiful Rieslings we grow down here. Compared to the German ones that are known on the world market, ours are more dry, more fresh, they're consumed um, younger. They still have this on, on the tongue, yeah, they're very fresh. So we do have exporters and watch out for Austrian Rieslings down there in Australia. We sail on to incomparable Vienna, the capital of Austria and one of my favourite European cities. Vienna effortlessly melds the old and the new and art and music are key components of the city's cultural makeup. Grand buildings like Schönbrunn Palace hark back to the age of the Habsburg emperors. More on that later. Now that is one impressive backyard. Art lovers are in for a treat in Vienna. You could opt to visit the new Albertina Modern, but I'm off to the original Albertina Museum, which holds a priceless collection of paintings by the Grand Masters including no less than 40 works by Picasso. You may be lucky enough to see Albrecht Dürer's watercolour Young Hair. Painted in 1502, it's one of the most famous artworks in Europe. The imposing Hofburg dominates Vienna's centre and served as the residence of the ruling Habsburg dynasty for over 600 years. Emperor Franz Joseph I was the last of the significant Habsburgs. His beloved wife Elizabeth, known as Sissy to family and friends, was assassinated in 1898 and the emperor ruled until his death in 1916. Today, the family's private apartments are open to the public and they're a fascinating step back in time. The rooms paint a picture of a hard-working monarch dedicated to his wife and children. No stone is left unturned in terms of what imperial life entailed and your ticket includes entry to the Sissy Museum. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart composed many of his most famous operas, concertos and symphonies in Vienna during the classical period. And no visit to the Austrian capital would be complete without attending a concert of his works.
time for a change of pace and a bite to eat as we drop by Vienna's oldest restaurant to learn the secret to making the perfect Wiener Schnitzel. First established in 1447 and having welcomed many famous diners, the Gretchen Bison has invited us into their kitchen to watch the magic happen. The secret, we're told, is all about being handy with that mallet. Those that have gone before us include Mozart, Beethoven, and even Johnny Cash. Go figure. Oh, yum. Bratislava is the capital of Slovakia, and this city turns out to be the biggest surprise of our trip. It has a captivating old centre, which is beautifully preserved and perfect for exploring on foot. For a bird's eye view of the city, it costs just a few euros to head up to the observation deck at the aptly named UFO Tower. You'll get a sensational view of Bratislava Castle, the old centre and riverfront. If you're in the market for quality souvenirs of your trip, head to Uluv, the centre for folk art production in Bratislava, which has been tasked with keeping Slovakia's artisanal heritage alive. Pottery features prominently in the centre's gift shop, and our contact Barbara tells me more about this particular artistic tradition. Uh, yeah, pottery is very important in Slovakia. Uh, we have long tradition and there are like um, hundreds of types of pottery and decorations used on the pottery. So um, actually it's one of the most popular curses in, in our centre. And you're keeping the traditions alive here because you've got classes for the children. Yeah. How's that work? Uh, very well. Uh, we have different types of courses for adults, for children, and um, they are almost every time totally full. Mm. Or, so very popular? Yeah, it is, it is. And actually right now they have some kind of small exhibition for the, for the parents. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I decide to have a go at throwing my own Slovakian pot. But with limited success. And that brings us to the final stop on this cruise, and in many ways, the best has been saved for last. You could easily fill a week in Hungary's regal capital city, Budapest. It's a tale of two cities, actually, Buda on one side of the Danube and Pest on the other. Must-sees include the neo-Gothic Hungarian Parliament Building, the famous Chain Bridge, Buddha Castle, Fisherman's Bastion and Epic Hero Square. we decide to check out one of the city's famous thermal baths. And I can't recommend splashing around with hundreds of perfect strangers highly enough. This turns out to be one of the absolute highlights of our trip. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Europe, just head to our website. <laughs>